Welcome back to the Glen. Watkins Glen International Road Course Racing for this Camping World Series. There's a good shot of Ricky Carmichael right there. Currently being shown in the sixth position. Antonio Perez has led here in the early going. You know, a lot of times at a road course, you run it a little bit differently than you do an oval. You, you start at the end of the race and work your way backward. Once you get in your fuel window, you want to get down pit road, get your fuel in, because you would rather do your stop under green because it takes so long to get around this racetrack. And then when the caution flag comes out, everybody else comes down pit road, you go right to the pace car up in front of them. Sounds like you've used that strategy before. Once or twice. <laughs> But we'll see how that strategy will play out here as Ricky Carmichael, the rookie former Supercross champion and a great one at that, has shown his adaptability to these stock cars. He's not taken a whole lot of time. There's Jeffrey Earnhardt right in front of him in the eight. Yeah, that's that left-hander, turn number 10. Now they're going into turn number line, turn number 11, the last corner of the racetrack. Starts down the long front straightaway. Some of these guys will stay in third gear on this straightaway. Some will go all the way to high gear. Who trouble on the racetrack? Got a car stalled on the racetrack. That is Jonathan Smith. Have the Troy Williams machine, number 21. And Smith, part of the NASCAR Drive for Diversity program, and that's not where he wants to be right now. Boy, Ooh, look Eddie at this. Donald, look at the smoke out of that car. That car is not going to be long for this race. Oh, no, it looks terminal. You could have a local caution here. If you have somebody slide off the racetrack, you may only have a local caution. But Jonathan Smith was stuck on the racetrack, and you see there's probably some fluid down from Andy McDonald, and he's also stalled as well, so that will bring out a full course yellow. Yeah, because they're going to have to get the wrecker around to him and try to pull that off the racetrack. So there's another view of Andy McDonald. You could see the fluids trailing from behind that 71 car. Tough break for Eddie coming off the top five run. The 11, Jesus Hernandez just didn't miss getting in whatever was coming out from his car. Smart job to get it off of the race course. Window net is down. And no doubt he'll be climbing out of that car in a moment. It's, we are under caution here now at Watkins Glen. Antonio Perez out of Mexico City, Mexico is the leader. And Philly's driven a smart race so far. I think most of these guys have just focus on staying on course. That's right. We had, on a, we had a couple of different incidents at the same time. We had Jonathan Smith over at one end of the racetrack. Meanwhile, Eddie McDonald in the 71 car blows up on the front stretch on the other end of the racetrack. So that's what necessitated the full course yellow here at Watkins Glen. Yeah, and again, you're right. You can have a partial caution or a full course caution. And we're under the full course caution right now. But Eddie... Antonio Perez, rather, is still the leader as you see Jonathan Smith's car being pushed around this racetrack. A long way around this racetrack, and it's very elevated. Do You have some uphill sections of the racetrack and then some downhill sections of the racetrack. Well, while we're under caution, let's take a break from here at Watkins Glen and the NASCAR Camping World. Still under caution here at the uh, Glen at Watkins Glen International. Mike Hawkwood along with Phil Parsons, Derek Pernasiglio working with us down on the pit lane today. There's some extended pit stops going on here. These are some cars that you talked about how hard it is to make these guys into road course cars. And they're still doing some work. That's the Dustin Delaney car in front of you and the Craig uh, Ghost car right behind him, that white car. One thing about this racetrack, it takes so long to get around here, you have a lot of time to make repairs or to do some work to your car. Obviously, an early caution flag, it's a good time to make the repairs that you feel like you need to make because you have a long time to, to overcome this early pit stop. Yeah, Delaney got his car in the way. Look, they're having some trouble getting the wind of that up on the two car of Craig Ghosts. He's had all kinds of problems here early. Now they're going to try to fire it away. Yeah, that car is out of the Eddie Sharp stables down in Denver, North Carolina. So much success. Eddie's had an ARCA Remax series. Well, let's go down to Derek, who's hanging out down there around that car. Derek, having trouble getting that thing going. 
Problems with the Greenville Toyota, number two of Craig Ghost. He's trying to get the engine refired. The crew is pushing the car down on the pit road. You can hear a lot of rumbling and rattling inside the engine. So far, no luck with the Toyota, number two. It's a good way to get some exercise, though. Trying to just <laughs> downhill from that portion of pit road. There you go. Well, it is fired and down and away and under caution here and uh, there you see the two car running around to get back in line. Antonio Perez continues to lead. Matt Kobaluk running second right now. Max Dumeray also up there out of Ghent, Belgium. Jeffrey Earnhardt I think has been impressive. By the way, Jeffrey Earnhardt is the son of Kerry Earnhardt grandson of the late Dale Earnhardt Sr. Carries Dale Sr.'s oldest son, Dale Jr.'s older brother. There you see Matt Kobala, sponsored by the Mohican Sun Casino, which is very near where he began his racing career. Steve Park runs in the fourth spot. Keep an eye on Steve Park. A lot of success at this racetrack. A lot of yeah. experience here. I seem to remember back a few years ago, Steve Park could really run this track and run it well. Green is back out. And as Bill told us, there's that downhill to the first turn, and then they'll go through the S's. 65 car on the outside trying to make a move. Drives through the speedy drive. That's Stan Silva. He's going to fall in behind that four car of Ricky Carmichael. Ricky right there, as you can see, currently in the sixth spot. Interesting that Stan Silva is from the West Series. Normally does not run in this series at all, as you see Perez out in front. But what's neat about the Camping World Series now, Phil, is that the West Series and the East Series cars are identical. So say a guy wants to come run a Watkins Glen, he just come run it. I think that's a great idea that NASCAR had, is to combine these series. Essentially, they both have their individual schedules, East and West, and then they have a combination race in Iowa, which is we had just a few weeks ago. There's Brian Chu. This, this could be a scheduled pit stop. Remember, we talked about running this race backwards. This could be a scheduled pit stop for Brian Chu. Matt Kobaluk, second place. Kobaluk's coming off a year. A lot of disappointment. Max Dumer right now. There are a lot of folks in the East think this guy, this youngster, he's still a teenager, has a lot of talent. And he's come over and he's under the tutelage of Mike Olson, who owns that car. Also runs a limited schedule in the ARCA Remax series for Mike Olson. Really been pretty impressed with Max. There you can see fourth place car, the Waste Management Chevrolet, Steve Park. I think that was Stan Silva doing a little detour out there outside of uh, the short shoot between one and two. Here's the S's. The left hander, then that's followed right by a right hander. These guys should be able to run flat footed from the time they leave turn number one all the way till they get down here to the inner loop. How hard is it to get the hang of a road course when all you've done all your career is oval course racing? You know, it's really difficult, and sometimes it seems to be easier for the younger drivers because they haven't had a lot of time to learn habits for oval tracks. So, uh, you know, some guys really adapt very quickly, and some guys really struggle throughout their careers on road courses. Where on this course did you find it the best place to pass? I really like passing coming off of... Uh, the last corner, which is turn 11, get a run on somebody, and then you get down, outbreak them down into turn number one. That's a very tricky part of the racetrack because, as you can see, this is a long straighter with that's turn number 11 right there. It's downhill, as you can see right there. Perez going downhill. You have to downshift hard on the brakes. You can get some wheel out there, but if you can get a run on somebody coming off that last corner, turn 11, get beside him, get on the inside, outbreak him, get down into turn number one. That's the best place to pass. Well, as you see, we've got several international drivers in this field. We had a driver from Mexico on the pole. We've got a driver from Holland. We've got a driver from Belgium. All in the field, and all the fans are enjoying it here. Antonio Perez, Matt Kobolak, Max Dumere, your leaders.